In this training session, we will review the menu bar section of the Wave Runner GUI. The menu bar is located at the top of the Wave Runner GUI and is used to create and load job files, configure the system settings, run offline time trials, and most importantly, provides access to the context based help screens. These help screens are designed to provide the user with intuitive, in depth assistance regarding all levels of job creation and system setup. Starting with the left most pull down, we see File. File allows us to create new jobs, load existing job files, as well as save current jobs. Job Properties allows the user to enter general comments and descriptions related to the job. Normally, Focus, Material Type, and Fixture information is put here. This section has no direct bearing on the job. It only serves as a reminder as to what was done to create a successful product. Import allows the user to bring in external files such as vector graphics and bitmaps with various file formats available. Once imported into the job file, a vector file can still be edited and exploded into sub-entities or groups. This is useful when only a small portion of the graphic is to be used or requires quick editing. Back at the menu bar level, we next see the Edit pull-down. Here, we can undo or redo the last few operations, delete entities, duplicate entities, and even perform an array copy. Selected entities can be grouped or ungrouped, as well as aligned, and move positionally through the Nudge feature. Two of the more useful features are located in this drop-down menu, and those are Center and Rehatch All. When an entity is imported or created, and we want to ensure it is located at the exact center of the screen, the Center Both feature will place the object at the 0, 0 position of the marking field. Additionally, the Rehatch All function is an especially useful tool. Once an entity has had a hatch applied to it, resizing the entity results in a change in the spacing of the hatching which in turn changes the effect the laser pen has on the entity being marked due to a change in fill density. Rather than having to go and rehatch each entity in a job to be sure any scaling changes are accounted for, it is strongly suggested that the Rehatch All button be used throughout the file creation and modification process to be sure all fill densities are correct when a file is saved and executed. Next, at the menu bar, we come upon the Mark dropdown. Here, we can use the Increment and Decrement tools to simulate a serialization or variable text field change to ensure it behaves as expected during part making. The Time Info feature is also very useful, as it gives the user an approximation of the cycle time for a job file, given the current setup marking pens and Galvo settings. When a job is being quoted, this Time Info tool can make bidding that job much simpler. The next pull down from the menu bar is Extras. From the Extras list, splitting operations are performed when a rotary or linear axis is used for parts larger than the mark field for the specified optical arrangement. This will be covered in depth in a later tutorial, along with Step and Repeat along with Motion Jog. Again, the context-based help is very useful for understanding these topics in greater detail. The User tab is for when a password protection scheme has been employed. This is where a user would enter their user information and password to gain access to the marking software. Settings Settings is the main screen for configuring the system. Everything from the background color to the laser type is specified here. This is meant for system configuration and should never be modified by untrained individuals, as damage to physical hardware can occur if improper changes are made. Reset License will do just as it says. Pressing this will cause a pop-up window asking you to confirm that you really want to delete the license file from your computer. Once deleted, a valid license will need to be entered before the system can be used. 
the software will continue to load in demo mode only. No saving or laser output will be possible without a valid license present. Units Metric millimeters and imperial inch measurements can be selected depending on a user's preference. This can be done at any time and even during a job file creation. Useful when some drawings are given in metric and others in imperial units. Lastly is the Help screen. Under the Contents tab, we gain access to the context-based Help Manual. It is strongly suggested for all users, regardless of ability and level, to use this comprehensive tool. This concludes the lesson.